you're all well. So I've got the Easy Press in front of me and if you saw my live video you'll know it didn't quite go to plan. I've had a really good play with this now and one of the big problems I had was that I assumed it was just going to be a miniature version of a heat press and it's not. It's something completely different in its own right. It is a hybrid between an iron and a heat press and I love it. I think it is absolutely fantastic but you do have to treat it as its own individual item and like with everything there's always a learning curve. Now I also just wanted to address in the live video I was using a black kind of canvasy fabric bag and I really struggled uh, with the iron on and I thought it was the press. I actually went the following day and used my big heat press and that struggled with it as well. And on further inspection it seems to have some form of coating on it which the iron-on just didn't like at all. So I just want to stress that, that that was an issue with the bag itself, not with the easy press. I think that this is fantastic. The big thing I love about it is the safety element of it. So with an iron or a heat press they get very very hot and there's no kind of protection around them. And when you've got little ones running around or you've got pets running around it's a big worry. With this it's got its cradle which I absolutely love and none of this gets hot. Uh, it just, I mean it gets a little warm but it's not hot to touch. The only bit that really gets hot is this grey bit here um, and even then you can still touch it without it you know, causing a severe burn. It's the bottom that's the issue but because it's got this cradle everything that gets hot is totally encased and I love that, I think that that's great. The other thing that I really like about it is once it's heated up, that's it. You don't have to keep heating it up, it doesn't lose its heat, it will stay exactly at the temperature that you want it to be at. And again, I think that's brilliant. And it cools down really quickly as well. So if you've got something at say 340 degrees Fahrenheit and then you want to move it down to 310, it will cool itself down to that temperature and then if you want to bring the temperature back up again you can. It's so versatile, I really like that and it's super super easy to use. I cannot tell you how easy this is to use. So we're going to switch it on. So to switch it on you literally just press the start button. So you'll see we've got our temperature here and you can have it in either degrees Fahrenheit or centigrade. So to change it to centigrade you just hold down the temperature button and it will change to centigrade and then if you want to change it back to Fahrenheit you just hold that button down and it will change back to Fahrenheit and then if you want to increase your temperature you just click temp and it will start flashing and then you can increase it to the temperature that you want. So I want it at 310. So to change your timer all you need to do is press it and it will start flashing and then you can either decrease your time or increase your time and it's in seconds as well which is absolutely brilliant. So it also comes with a reference guide and it tells you your iron on type so foil, light or metallic so light is just normal iron on glitter and holographic and then you've got your fabric across the top and then it gives you your degrees in Fahrenheit and Celsius and also the seconds as well and I'm kind of playing with them a bit at the minute um, I'm finding on the temperature that I'm increasing them by about five degrees and that's working really well and I'm keeping the times the same so you will need to kind of play around with it but I just love this, I think it's absolutely fantastic. So when it's at its desired temperature it will make a little bleeping noise and then your little cricket will turn green and this just lets you know that it's ready to use. But it will stay at this temperature as long as it's 
as long as it's on. So you can see that I'm on my desk and then I've got this great big wooden board here and I'm also going to put a tea towel down as well. Now you do need to ensure that your surface is heat resistant. So you want a nice sturdy surface, so a desk or even a big chair, a big wooden chair, a floor. You do not want to use this on an ironing board at all. And then you want something between your desk and your easy press. So something that's really heat resistant. So in my live, I used a self healing mat and I thought that that would be fine. It wasn't at all. Uh, it actually started to warp slightly from the heat. So you do need to ensure that your surface is completely heat resistant. I've been using this for a few days now and it works great. And as I say, I'm going to put a tea towel on top of it as well. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get your press and you actually want to place it on your item for about five seconds just to heat it up and you don't need to put any pressure on this at all. You just need to hold it in place. There is something that I need to explain as well. You've got your seams running down the side of your t-shirt or your bag or whatever it is you're going to be using your iron on for. And if your easy press is going to sit on those seams, you are going to have to use a heat resistant pillow. And we will be going into that. In the meantime, I've actually just been using a rolled up piece of fleece fabric and that's been working really well and it's just to lift the seams up slightly so that the easy press can get a nice seal around the whole area because the easy press actually heats up consistently all through the plate. So unlike with an iron where it's concentrated to one area, the entire surface of the easy press distributes heat evenly and so if a piece is slightly raised it's going to affect the whole thing. So you do need to put something cushioned underneath your seam areas but for this occasion our easy press is actually not on our seams so we're going to be fine. And the other thing is that the surface of the easy press is 9 inches by 9 inches. So you can see that my iron-on is ready to go. Now I don't need to put a barrier sheet between my iron-on and my easy press whilst I've got my carrier sheet on. Once I remove this, if I'm going to go back over this with my easy press or I'm layering, then I will need to put a Teflon sheet down. So we're just going to lift our easy press up and place it over our iron-on. And then I'm just going to press my timer and it's going to start counting down for me. Now you don't need to exert an awful lot of pressure. You are just kind of pushing down on it. It's not strenuous, you're not having to kind of strain to have that pressure going. You are literally just holding the easy press in place. So we're going to leave it to cool for just a few seconds and then when we've left it to cool for a few seconds we're just going to go in and we're just going to gently peel away and you can see that that is really adhered to the shirt now. So now I'm going to go in with some rose gold foil and I'm going to keep my temperature and my time exactly the same. So because I've got exposed vinyl here, if I place my easy press straight onto that, it's just going to kind of crumple away. It'll melt. I've got a Teflon sheet here and this is actually the sheet that comes with the printable iron-on light from Cricut. So I'm just going to place that over it. I'm going to go back in with my easy press and then I'm going to start my countdown timer and again I'm just gently pressing on top of the easy press I'm not exerting a huge amount of pressure
use some glitter iron on. So I need to increase my heat to 340 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm just going to click temperature and it's going to start flashing. So I'm going to increase it to 340. And then my timer, I need to reduce to 25 seconds. So again, I'm just going to click that and reduce it down to 25. And this is gonna heat up super, super quick. So that's now ready, it's beeped at us and it's given us our little green symbol. And I'm just going to press my C and again, I'm just really resting on the easy press. <laughs> piece of iron on and I actually need to reduce my temperature now on my easy press so I'm going to go to temp and I'm going to reduce it down to 310 and I'm going to increase my timer to 30 seconds and you'll now see that the easy press is going to start cooling itself down to the desired temperature and it does this quite quickly considering it got so hot and now it's having to reduce itself it does it in a really timely fashion which I really like that my iron-on is fully adhered. I cannot tell you how much I love this easy press. I, I think it's fantastic. My initial mistake was that I thought it was going to be basically a mini heat press and it's not and it's fantastic and I, I can honestly put my hand on my heart and say that I will be using this so so much more than my heat press in fact I'm probably going to get rid of my heat press at this point because this is just fantastic for me I think the easy press has performed fantastically it's coped really well with all these different types of iron-on it's coped really well with the layering it's so simple and easy to use as with everything new you are going to have to play with it you are going to have to play with the settings but it it's really easy to adapt to and that's something that I absolutely love about it. 